This week I've been working mostly on crew stats and items that affect those stats. There's been a pretty big redesign in how this works compared to the prototype. Units now have a map to hold all their stats, which is similar to a dictionary for those who aren't familiar with C++. It's not quite the same thing, but the important thing here is to look up stats by their name as a string. This includes HP, available actions, cloak level, the number of pending dodges, and probably a lot more in the future. I might handle built-in stats differently for performance in the future if I need to, but the reason I'm doing string lookup for now is I want mods to be able to store and access arbitrary new stats I never thought of. I've also realized I can generalize the logic for a lot of different items into one stat changer class. Just like with the projectile weapon class, where you can make a wide variety of weapons by just editing exposed fields, stat changer exposes everything you need for cloaks, medkits, shields, and probably a lot more. Take for instance this medkit. I've given it an icon to use in the action bar, set it to affect the HP stat, and the type of change is delta, which just means it'll add the specified value. It doesn't repeat or have a cooldown, but it does cost an action, and it's single use so it disappears when you use it. Right now it's an equipable object, but if I just uncheck this I can make it a stationary object that you have to be standing next to to use. If this weren't a built-in stat, specifying a default value handles the case where it hasn't been set yet. Also, this day on cost field is for another idea I'm toying with, I'll come back to that later. For the cloak, I'm affecting a different stat, but this time using max, which means it'll raise the cloak to level 1, but not lower it if it's already a higher number. I'm leaving this open for the possibility of different levels of cloaking that are harder to see through with scanners or perks. The cloak does repeat for two turns, so it reapplies that stat change at the beginning of the next two turns. I'm handling limited time effects like this by resetting them to zero at the start of each turn, and then giving perks and equipment an opportunity to update the stat before it actually affects anything. I thought about having the cloak reset the stat at the end of its duration, but that causes complications if, for instance, you have two cloaks active at the same time with different durations. I don't want one ending to negate the other. I have some ideas on how mods can integrate to do this for stats that aren't built in, but I'll finalize all that later. I don't have the perk system in place yet either, but basically they'll have an opportunity to alter stats when the perk is added, at the beginning or end of a turn, or at the beginning or end of an encounter. I think this will work a lot better than the old system, and make it a lot easier for mods to add perks that do things I haven't thought of. That's really been my biggest challenge in this rebuild. I could have just hard-coded the logic for a medkit and cloak in a few lines each, but I'm keeping mods in mind for everything I do now. My approach here may not be normal, and it may not be the best, but I really like the idea of anyone being able to open a stripped-down project in Godot and create new content with new mechanics I haven't thought of. And yes, I've gone back to pronouncing it Godot, on purpose, because now I've got just as many comments telling me I had it right the first time, and, well, if I'm going to annoy the same number of people either way, I'll just stick to what sounds better to me. So, I've been spending a lot of time working on the structure of things, and these first couple of stat-changing items are a proof of concept. Units now take damage, too, and drop items on death. You may notice I've also made some changes to my dev toolbox here. With a growing list of items, I've made it easier to either place them or equip them directly to the selected unit, and I've added commands that modify stats the same way that stat-changer items do. I've even added a help command for Patreon supporters who get extreme early access builds. Although all of these commands are still very limited since they're not meant to be part of the finished game. Or maybe they'll be behind some kind of cheat code, I don't know yet. So, back to that day on cost field. I've been thinking a lot about what kinds of items I might want to put in the game to make sure what I design is flexible enough to handle all of them, and I'm considering adding different damage types. Day on energy factors heavily into the backstory of this universe, and I figured a day on based weapon could bypass normal shields, but to balance that, perhaps they would use up a limited resource every time you fire them. Similarly, day on shields would cost day on to activate for a set number of turns. I've got other ideas for late game day on tech too, but I'm thinking you could either buy day on energy in stations or build day on collectors that gather random amounts every time you travel. My big question is, does this mechanic actually make the game more interesting or is it just tedious? It might be annoying to keep restocking or to have items that stop working once you run out. I'd like to hear your opinions on this in the comments. And while you're at it, I'd love to hear any ideas you might have for other equipment or tech to put in the game. If I don't put them in the game myself, I'll try to at least make them feasible with modding within reason. I'm also still open for any questions you might want to see answered in my Q&A video in a few weeks. I think it'll be coming out on August 2nd, but I'll be making it at least a week in advance. As always, if you'd like to help this channel, you can hit the like button, spread the word, and subscribe if you haven't already. Special thanks again to David Nurkula for very generous support, and to all of you, thanks for watching.